Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And today we shall be talking about Jamaica, a sinking ship, right? Because for many years we have been denying, we have been refusing to acknowledge the many problems that bedevil that country. As a result of that, the ship is loaded, as it were, with corruption, that it's very, very difficult for it now to stay afloat on the ocean. And we have been ignoring that. You know, and imagine a captain of a ship, right, ignoring a sinking ship when we know that the life of the passengers are going to be endangered. And right now, I think that Jamaica stands as a sinking ship. It is not no longer a metaphor, it is literally sinking. And this morning, I was not going to talk about this topic. I just decided to do so because in response to a video of mine, this, you know, um, viewer took me on and that, why don't you talk about the positives happening in Jamaica? Now, one of the things I must say, let me open up with this caveat that there are indeed positive things happening in Jamaica, but they are pockets of excellence, individual successes, and we applaud those successes, including the recent appointment of Dr. Nigel Clark to being, or to, you know, um, in the future to becoming one of the deputy managing directors of the International Monetary Fund. Certainly, we applaud him for his intellect. Um, I can't applaud him for his sterling performance. I would applaud him for his dismal performance with the Jamaican economy. But let's applaud him for his ability to, you know, to land a job at the International Monetary Fund. I might not want to work for that institution, and I don't think he believes that that institution is a transformative institution. It's one that is going to help, um, you know, nations like Jamaica to grow and to develop. I understand, I would think he would understand that that's a uh, plantation-like institution, right? And that it is what it is. It's a part of the United States military industrial complex and a leopard cannot change its spots and the IMF is what it is. It is a neoliberal, a structural adjustment institution that seeks to demolish the foundations on which, you know, firm and Western civilization has been built on. Well, let me get my thoughts together right here. But so I would not want to deny, I would not want to negate the fact that there is in fact pockets of excellence, but these are individual pockets of excellence. I'm sure, in fact, one of my cousins talked to me and she told me that, you know, one of my second cousins actually got seven subjects out of nine subjects that she did. So, well, she got nine subjects. She got seven distinctions, I should say, and two credits. And I applaud her grand congratulations, you know, on that very, very uh, important success. So we have, and another cousin of mine at your castle, that one was at St. Hilda's, the, and I have another second cousin who got six out of eight subjects at your castle, applaud her, right? So that's, there are pockets of excellence and people are doing well here and there. And I'm sure there are many other successes of students who have done exceptionally well in their external exams. But yet we have also collectively as a nation, we have not done well in the Caribbean Council examinations and the other advanced examinations that they have there, external examinations that, that I mean. We need to come to grips with these. We need to understand that collectively as a nation, Jamaica is not doing well as far as education is concerned. But definitely we do have individual pockets of excellence, but that is not going to help our nation in the long run. What will help our nation in the long run is if as collective, as a collective entity, right, as a nation, we can have large scale pockets of excellence, not just for the few, but for the many, for the masses of people in Jamaica. And what we see when we go to Jamaica is a large landmass of ignorance and people who are not able to communicate and to deal with the world in which they live in. They cannot resolve conflicts. They cannot have a rational conversation, right? And they're not able to um, critically assess what is happening in their own country.
That is why we're so tribalistic, right? And we live in this partisan politics and you are either, you are either GLP or you're PNP and you stay within those two camps, which disallow you to look objectively and analytically at the problems that the devil modern Jamaica. So I do not want to come here and think that there are not no positives. There are obviously positives and there are a few people there who are holding on, who are praying for the nation and who continue to have their high standards and they're not going to allow the masses of people and the culture at large to allow them to lower their standards. But that is in the minority. Those people are in the minority, they are not in the majority. What we have when you have a society where the majority of people are not progressive, then that ship is going to sink because we do not have the level of, uh, what should I say now, the, the, the ship is not able to stay afloat because the masses of people are unable to sustain it, right? To sustain that ship being kept afloat on the oceans. And that is what we have to understand. Now, today we're going to look largely at um, Michael Abrahams. And Michael Abrahams is a doctor in Jamaica, a medical doctor. And he is writing for the Jamaica newspaper. In fact, he is a frequent contributor to the Jamaica Gleaner. I don't always follow Michael Abrahams because sometimes he has some very weird ideas, especially when it comes on to religion and he keeps on bashing religion and thinking that religion is something that is, you know, something to be laughed at when he does not understand that religion plays its role. An educated form of religion plays a critical role in any society. Right, because societies are built on different institutions. So we have religious institutions, we have political institutions, and we have the home also as an institution. And these three institutions, these three major institutions, I should say, are critical for the sustenance and the survival of Western civilization. And we hear in recent times that religion is no longer important, and we can see our society, you know unfolding, as it were, and the morals that used to glue the society together are actually collapsing, and what we're seeing is anarchy on the land. So we've got to be careful that Michael Abrahams need to rethink his position and need to stop churning with a lot of nonsense as far as religion is concerned. Now, I've said enough about Michael Abrahams, but he has written an interesting article this morning for the Jamaica Gleaner, and he says his the title of his article is Michael, um, we are a sinking ship, right? And we're going to go through that article and stop the video, all right? So let me share the article with you so that we can discuss the contents therein. Now, so he says here, let me again um, begin here. Recently, while clearing my phone of photographs and videos that had been accumulated in the device, I came across an interesting cartoon. It depicted a sinking ship with three rats. Two of the rodents were at the helm of the ship. Let me see if I can make this bigger. A third was seen jumping off, saying, I'm actually leaving to focus on other projects. The image made me laugh, and I posted it on my Instagram and Facebook pages with the caption, I saw this, and it reminded me of someone. Who do you think it is? I called no names, but our finance minister, Dr. Nigel Clark, came to mind for many people, including me. Clark was recently appointed as Deputy Managing Director at the International Monetary Fund. The appointment is a great achievement, but some perceive him as abandoning a sinking ship. Some persons like me found the post funny, but there are others, there were others, I beg your pardon, who were not only who were not only not amused, but visibly upset. To be, upset, to be honest, I have nothing negative to say about Dr. Clark's appointment. I simply found the cartoon hilarious, right? So he's not bashing Dr. Clark as it were, but whether we like it or not, Dr. Clark is jumping ship. However, the image of a sinking ship resonated with me because I do see my country in that position. The harsh reality is that in several respects, we are on a downward spiral. For starters, corruption and a lack of transparency and accountability still thrive at the highest level and indiscipline and disrespect among the populace stubbornly persist. 
crime is out of control. So he's itemizing the things that he is witnessing there. And Dr. Michael Abrahams lives in Jamaica. A lot of Jamaicans tend to criticize those of us who live abroad. You tend to criticize those of us and say that we do not know what is happening and lots of things are happening in Jamaica that are positive. But he has been living in Jamaica. Dr. Michael Abrahams, to my knowledge, has never lived in another country. He has traveled, I'm sure, to many countries, but he has not lived. He has lived his entire life in Jamaica and is a frequent contributor to the Gleaner, the main or the major newspaper in Jamaica. According to World Population Review, our murder rate made us number one in 2022, and Statista ranked us at number two in 2023. All right, let me repeat that, because sometimes some of you lack intelligence, you don't have the ability to think, and then you're attacking me for saying, Oh, why don't you highlight the positives happening in Jamaica? Now, if we have an economy that is in, in shambles, and also we can we, we are known to be one of the most murderous nations in the world, right? Too critical, too critical aspects of what you know should contribute to a prosperous or a, a nation that is not prosperous. Right? These are two indicators that you cannot ignore because they are very, very important indicators in, in terms of where your country is heading. And if people can't feel a sense of security, be it in their physical security, their physical safety, and also economic security, then that nation is no longer a viable option, is no longer a viable nation state. And this has been going on for years. This is not a new trend, right? Like perhaps what is happening in Trinidad and other countries that could be a new trend for them that they're seeing now an uptick in the murder rate and their economy might not as be might not be as strong as it used to be. But that has not always been the trend for Trinidad and Tobago. But this has always been the reality for Jamaicans. We have never had not even five years of prosperity over the last 62 years in which we call ourselves an independent nation. Something that we've got to think about. And I'm not here to argue with people who have no brain cells, right? Because the majority of people there do not are not thinkers. They're just floating and going with the wind. Now, recently, there were 70 murders recorded in the country in just three weeks. 70 murders recorded in just three weeks. What is also disturbing is the fact that according to my contacts in the police force and human rights groups, not all murders and other violent crimes are reported and recorded. So let us say that you have 100 people being murdered in three weeks, given the fact that many of them are unreported. And it would not surprise me because the government wants to maintain a good face. And now that they are in the mood of electioneering, that they will definitely conceal some of the things that are happening in Jamaica. But it's time for citizens to understand that we've been lied to, we have been bamboozled, we have been tricked for too long, and something has to give. Something will have to give, and we should be learning our lessons from what is happening in Haiti. But we have we are not learning. We're thinking that we're different from Haiti and Haiti because of what the French has done, and you know, not understanding the realities of what afflict us, the besetting the problems, these same issues, the challenges that we face from day to day. We continue to ignore them at our own peril. Our education system is not at a good place either. We are having a serious challenge in retaining our teachers. In discipline in our schools remains a persistent problem and our examination results reflect serious deficiencies. For example, our last set of Caribbean secondary education certificate results were dismal. The regional pass rate for mathematics was 36%, which is poor, but Jamaica's was even lower at 33.4%. Also, only 18% of students passed five 
four more subjects, including mathematics and English, a three percentage point decrease compared with last year. So we are on a decline, right? It's not that we are improving as some of my friends would like to suggest, some of my naysayers, some of my critics. But I can't live in a la-la land like you are living in. Our health sector is in crisis, right? And I've been saying that these are the things I have been pointing out long before Michael Abrahams, you know, has been pointing out these things. I'm, he, I'm just emphasizing them, reinforcing the points that I have been made, I've been making in the videos that I have published so far. Long waiting times in emergency rooms and long waits for surgery persist. It is not uncommon for ill people to be sitting in chairs for days in casualty and accident and emergency departments. Radiological services at public hospitals are woefully inadequate. Our maternal mortality rate is, a, is higher now than it was four decades ago, meaning that pregnant and recently delivered women today face a greater risk of death than in the 1980s. That is really alarming and disturbing and should be concern to all of us. Even a look at our music reveals a fall in quality. Assessing music and other art forms is more subjective than objective as tastes vary. But perusing the musical content being produced now reveals a decrease in creativity, both lyrically and in terms of melody and arrangements and an obsession with genitalia and sexual activity. Because our people lack the education, they lack the sophistication and they lack civility. So they are not able to perceive the decadence that is happening, that is pervasive in modern Jamaica. Don't get me wrong, not everything in Jamaica is bad or on the decline. Despite our many bad roads, we also have awesome highways and we could only dream of decades ago, that we could only dream decades ago. But who owns these highways? And we have to pay, a, you know, an astronomical amount of tolls to be able to drive on these roads. So these, these roads do not belong to us. And this is what Michael Abrahams should be emphasizing. These roads are not ours. We are indebted. And, and sometimes you really wonder if there's an end to the tolls that we're paying. And these tolls are astronomical. They're not normal. Right? These are high tolls that we have to pay. And I was looking at a highway in Montego Bay. Somebody was there and he was, you know, a returning resident, a Jamaican tourist was there. And he was commenting on how beautiful Jamaica is. And he's showing us the Rose Hall Highway there and the hotels and, you know, and looking at the highway and the patches on the highway. If Jamaicans are paying such, such high tolls to and from their journeys on these highways, highways, shouldn't they have paved roads 24 hours a day, 12 months a year? Right? They should. All these patches, everything is patched work and people are paying high tolls. Jamaicans should demand that if they're having to pay those high tolls, that the highways, the roads that make up the highways should be always paved, right? You don't want to see any patches on the road. And what I saw there was not impressive. He thought it was impressive, but I did not think it was impressive given the fact that Jamaicans have to pay huge amount of tolls to uh, travel, to traverse on those roads daily. I was not impressed as he was impressed, right? Now, he says technological advances, for example, at our airports have helped make our lives a bit less stressful in some areas. And who owns again the airports? We don't own these airports. And despite challenges in our health sector, we're able to provide treatment for some conditions that we struggled with before. Yes, so we have made some advances, but we have also gone backwards, right? So how do we begin to balance progress? How do we define progress? If when we take three steps forward, we're taking 10 steps backward. 
how are we going to define what progress is or is not? And that is the quandary, that is the crux of the matter that we have not yet really resolved. But standards in many areas have fallen drastically, unsurprisingly, our brain drain continues with the hemorrhaging, 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 am I spending, yeah, of our talent away from our shores. According to Fund for Peace, we are number two on the list of countries facing the most brain drain. And I have highlighted that to you. Right? I have highlighted that to you, that we are number two on the list of countries facing the most brain drain. But I don't think that you are concerned about that. Yes, let them go and, you know, People are free, the country, and people are free to move about. I got some of the responses that why worry about that? Jamaica is not North Korea, so our citizens should be free to move and to go wherever they want to go. And that point is accepted. But if we are having the large majority of our best trained or highly trained professionals leaving yearly, <laughs> that does not bode well for the country and the country's development. Right, And it sounds to me like a country like North Korea, where they're fleeing because they might not be fleeing because, you know, we have an autocratic system there, but they're fleeing because the economy is not intact and also they do not feel safe in that sort of nation state. So we are like North Korea to, to an extent, in a different sort of context, of course. So what do we do? That's a very good question. It is easy to blame the government as they have indeed contributed to our distress, but it would be unfair to do so as we have been on a separate slope for decades and both major political parties have contributed to our current situation. So we have to blame government to a great extent, but not one government. We have to blame both that somehow our political philosophy is, is, is spotty. Uh, it's not carefully thought out. The political machinery in Jamaica is false, is, is, is not real, is not geared toward improving the lives of the masses. So voting out this Jamaica Labour Party administration will not necessarily fix our problems, for not only has the People's National Party contributed to this decline in the past, but there is no guarantee that they will do any better if they return to power. Because they are the same. We understand that both political parties work for the economic oligarchy there. So they're not going to be beholden to change the status quo to challenge the entrenched problems and the entrenched philosophies and ideologies in Jamaica. They will not, because who supports them? The same economic oligarchs to whom they are committed and dedicated. Chronic poor governance has helped bring us here, but we must bear much of the responsibility ourselves. After all, it is we who vote for people we know who are corrupt because we have something to gain from their corrupt practices or because we are comrades or laborers for life. And he's right here. If we who abstain from voting and then complain when the administration in power fails us, it is we who complain about crime but dodge jury duty. Well, jury duty is not going to help if they, at the top, people are connected to criminals. So you can go to jury duty as you want to, but if the system is not, if you don't have separation of powers, right, then you are not going to be able to have a secure society. And our politicians are tied to the criminal elements, whether we like it or not. And the economic Elites also are also tied to the crime and violence we see there. So the judiciary is bought out and they're not going to render objective um, verdicts. It is we who abuse and neglect our children who grow up to be dysfunctional adults. It is we who heap praise on creatives 
producing content of little artistic value, which is true, right? The, because the home environment has also been torn apart, right? And we continue to embrace and to praise mediocrity. So a person like Vibes Cartel now is seen as a hero in Jamaica. And last night I was, you know, sort of browsing TikTok and I saw him, Vibes Cartel and his and his wife to be on online, right? On the social media app. And guess how many persons were there viewing him on his live? I think there were 14.6 thousand people on his live. Right? 14.6 thousand people on Vibes Cartel live. And Vibes Cartel has just been out of prison for roughly a month now. Right? A month and probably a, a few days, a couple of days. And he has over a million subscribers on TikTok. So you can imagine the amount of money that he's getting. And I'm sure he's going to be on YouTube. I'm sure he's going to be on all major social platforms, social media platforms. So he's going to be racking up a lot of money for talking nonsense. But you love it. You enjoy it. And you know, people who are poor, they're sending him gifts because on TikTok, you can send people gifts. And these gifts amount to money. They can be um, changed. They can be cashed. So if it's in a lion and all of the things and roses and all of the gifts that they send, and you have poor people who will be sending Vibes Carter, an ex-convict, an alleged ex-convict, lots of gifts, whilst he's also making lots of money from his presence on the social media apps, and your children are going to be impoverished. <laughs> Notice that Vibes Carter was suggesting that, yes, his concert will be expensive, for you to attend in December. And he was also encouraging you to sell your houses and your lands and your cars and even your body organs. And you're so stupid to do that because guess what? You have to go and see Vibes Cartel because you have to jump up and whine and behave stupid. You love to be stupid. And that is why we have a mediocre culture there that people is laughing at. And don't think that people love your culture. They love it because it's entertainment for a while. It's temporary, it's transitory. But it's nothing that will last. Right? And that is why the, the, the ship is sinking. Because the ship was never well, it wasn't built well. It wasn't a strong ship from the start. So we can see right now that the structure, because it had not had a firm structure it had not been designed well by the engineers, by the political engineers, by the economic engineers. We can see now that that ship is sinking, right? You loved what you saw because it was Jamaica to the world. That ship called Jamaica was to the world, right? And one of the things you have to understand, when you have a situation like that, we saw what happened during the that ship that song there what they call it again they not they um they uh the, 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 and you know you had celine dion sang about it what's what's it called again yeah whatever ship that that ship that was i think it was in 1913 the titanic <laughs> right i almost forgot that word the titanic notice that who were able to leave people jumped ship they were able that they, they chose the probably the most important people and they took them off the ship and were able to save them while people who perhaps were not known to be some of the most important people in the world, they were not among the most renowned of the world, they had to just stay in the sinking ship and they died. So what we have in Jamaica, some people are going to be able to jump ship, like the Dr. Nigel Clark, <laughs> right? These people can jump ship, even though they were a part of the design the engineering structure, the engineering professionals, but they can jump ship and they are jumping ship. And some have already, a lot have jumped ship already and many yearly are jumping ship through immigrating to other countries. And then you're going to leave the most vulnerable ones to sink in the ocean to their death. So I'm happy that 
uh, Michael Abrahams is using this metaphor of a sinking ship because Jamaica is in fact a sinking ship. That is a fact. That is nothing that is my opinion or Dr. Uh, what's his name? Abraham's opinion. All right. The ship has a captain, but we are members of the crew. The crew helps to steer the ship and maintain order. We have been an ineffective crew. We must demand good governance and not make excuses for those who fall short. Those of us who know better must do better and resist the normalization of slackness and mediocrity. We have the power to effect change. In the words of internet activists, and he have while Gonim, and he quotes here, the power of the people is much stronger than the people in power. I don't think so. That's not true. We tend to believe that. But if we do come together, and what I would say is that we, the people, are in the majority, are more than the economic and political oligarchs, right? So, and together, unity and numbers are strong. So if we come together against them, and we let them know that we, but they have more power than we do, right? The fact that they have more money and they have the political platform and they have the media that they own and lots of other things. I mean, we can't say that we're more powerful than they because, you know, that's not true. That's not practical. But in unity, there is strength. And if we go back to asking God to help us with his help, we can defeat them. But to suggest that we, the people, being so dumbed down, being having the not having the tools, the necessary tools to fight against them, I don't think that we are able, without God's help and without the unity, because unity is strength, then we are not going to be able to defeat them. Right? Because we have also, over the years, reposed too much power in their hands. We've given them a lots of powers by obeying them and obeying them uncritically as what we did during the pandemic. Right? Gave them this these large amount of power. And they're not going to be using that power to treat you nicely. They are going to treat you like slaves. And that is what we have to think. We must think. We must read. We must do our research before we make decisions that, like what we made during the, during the pandemic. Many of you made bad decisions and you followed everything your government told you to do because you were not thinking and you decided that you did not want to read. You didn't, you didn't want to do your investigation. It's too hard. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. And they have amassed an enormous amount of power to themselves. And they're not going to give it back to you. Right? They're not going to give it back to you. But in the context of Jamaica, we are in a situation right now that the corruption is so much entrenched. Right? It's so much grounded, cemented in that culture that it's impossible right now. <laughs> to fix things. The, the ship, just like the Titanic, will just have to sink because it is heading towards, the Titanic headed towards, what was it called again? A, uh, the, the, um, the uh, right? That, that, that thing, that ice, right? I, it's not ice. I can't remember, <laughs> remember the word, but it's heading there, right? That is what is it's heading to that sort of dangerous Um, iceberg, if you will. And it's going to sink. Right? Because the Titanic, the people knew, the crew knew that it was going to sink. They knew that they were headed and there was nothing that they could have done to have diverted the ship. And there's nothing at this juncture I can see. The only way that ship can be rescued, the ship of Jamaica can be rescued at this moment, at this juncture of the history, is if God Almighty intervenes. But we, I don't think he's going to intervene because guess what? I mean, he intervenes always. He's always there, but, on, but he will allow 
the enemy to destroy us because we are embracing criminality. We have embraced corruption. We have embraced indiscipline. And we have embraced lies. As a result of that, there's nothing that the creator can do to save us. Just like the members of the Titanic, he will just allow the ship to sink. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you like and you'll share and you subscribe. Looking forward to see you in another video. Ciao.